We want to take you now to Florence, Alabama, where officials are providing an update on the search for a fugitive murder suspect and a corrections officer who police say helped him escape. Yeah, the pair went missing one week ago today. Let's watch. 1.50 p.m. that the car, there was an abandoned car uh, on whatever road. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the road. Uh, they responded. The car was towed at 2.37 p.m. last Friday. So that means that uh, that's about a two hour drive from here. So about three, hour, three hours and 50 minutes after they left Lawrence, Alabama, they abandoned that vehicle. Uh, we're assuming where it was abandoned uh, and that it was abandoned so quickly that they probably had mechanical problems with it uh, because it was abandoned pretty much out in the middle of nowhere on the side of a county road where it would obviously draw attention and uh, be found. So we know now where the car is. We know where, what direction they went. Uh, right now we're trying to canvass the area uh, for any witnesses. Also trying to research, see if any uh, stolen vehicles were reported in that area uh, during that time. So that's what we're following up on. I have copies of the tow-in report for you. If you'd like to get a copy of that before you leave, uh, we uh, redacted the complainant's information. But uh, uh, we're, we're sort of back to square one as far as the vehicle description right now. As I said, we're working on trying to see if there are any uh, stolen vehicles in that area. Uh, I'm hoping that we will we'll get a break in that. Uh, but we're no longer looking for the Ford Edge. Uh, I also have with me uh, our district attorney, Chris Conley, and he has an update for you on the uh, reward information. Th thank you, Sheriff. Um, after talking with the sheriff, I contacted the governor's office this morning and submitted a written request for her to give us the maximum reward possible under state law, which that's $5,000 per person. I submitted a written request, and within one hour of getting that request, she just provided me with a proclamation approving that maximum request for the award. And she states that the circumstances surrounding this event indicate that every effort should be made to apprehend and arrest Vicki White and Casey White. So we thank the governor's office for their prompt response and are certainly hopeful that this may encourage or incentivize someone to, to come forward. So thank you. Thank you. Does that extend the total? Does it make it higher? That, uh, that makes the total reward for Casey White $15,000, the total reward for Vicki White $10,000. So a total of $25,000 in reward money now. Okay, with that, I'll take a few questions. Sheriff, are you upset at all about the fact that it took maybe a couple days for this other department to tell you guys that the car was sitting there in Howard? Well, I mean, not really. Obviously, we'd, we'd like to know on it Friday. They, they found the car before we even knew they were gone. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it, there's no fault or blame on anyone. You know, the tow driver told it Friday afternoon. I'm, I'm sure that he's probably seen some of the coverage that you guys have provided us. Uh, he saw the description of the car and then probably a light went off and said, hey, you know, I think I remember towing that car and went out in the lot and found it. But I guess I'm, I'm concerned because is it like you guys sent out a, a bulletin so he's, every agency should be getting a bulletin that you guys are looking for this car so I, I guess what I'm trying to figure out where was the ball dropped in terms of looking at the paperwork, where it was missing and that they had one? Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure I followed that question, but are you saying the deputy that got responded to the call? No, I'm just basically saying you guys put out a bulletin to the entire country that's yeah. looking for this car. Yes. And so I guess what I'm saying is, at what point did they look at the bulletin and notice that they had the same car that you were looking for? Well, the car was towed on Friday. That bulletin went out, if I'm not mistaken, Tuesday morning. So, you know, there again, that's about a four-day delay, and... Uh, I'm sure at some point in time, uh, a light went off in, in this guy's head, and he thought, wait a minute, you know. I mean, they tow a lot of cars, you know. Sheriff, was there anything found in the car? What sort of state was the car in? And has there been any credible sightings in that area of Tennessee? No credible sightings I'm aware of. The car was, uh, there was nothing in the car. Uh, uh, the car was not inventoried by the record company, and the comment is that it didn't appear to be anything in it. It had been, uh, there had been an attempt to spray paint it, um, and I have some photos if you want to see it. It's, it's a, it's a botched up job, but 
Uh, they did an attempt to try to paint it a little bit. What makes you think the car actually broke down in, you know, as opposed yeah. to them just ditching it getting well, into the car? Because of where it was found, a rural road, county road, where there's, you know, there may not a lot of traffic, but somebody obviously would see it sitting on the side of the road uh, and call it in, which is what happened. Uh, if I think if, if I were going to abandon a car that I knew was hot, it would be in a crowded parking lot somewhere where it would blend in and not stand out so much. Have you been able to piece any more of the puzzle pieces together in terms of what Vicky was up to leading up to this? There are reports that she was at the Kohl's buying large no. men's clothing and also at an adult store. No. I, I, you know, I don't know what she was up to. Uh, I, I think at this point it's obviously, you know, a, a jailhouse romance or something, but uh, that's all I, that's the only explanation I really have. Is there I, anything on video that you've seen to support that it was a romance? Not that I've seen. Anyone? I saw a hand over here a while ago. I thought. Sure. Quick question. Yeah. Yes, sir. You actually have the car in your possession, in law enforcement's possession. What can you glean from that vehicle, if anything, about how you're trying to track down these kids? I don't know. You know, it really doesn't leave us a lot. We just know what direction they were headed. You know, they headed north from here. Now, where they're after Friday afternoon when they abandoned that car, which direction they headed from there, we don't know. Uh, you know, so on that on, on that particular. Issue we're sort of back to square one. But. And one follow up that I know Mr. Connolly had announced earlier that $90,000 roughly was taken out of a series of banks by Vicki White the week prior. What can you say about that? Yeah, that's my understanding, you know, from, uh, from a number of banks. And, uh, you know, we knew she had cash. Uh, you know, we've been working on trying to find that, you know, find out what she had or whatever. But, but yes, I mean, they had, they had plenty of cash. Do you think she had more than $90,000 in cash? I don't, I, not that we know of. Yes, sir. Sure. Do you have any information about any connections as far as family members to either Casey or Vicki White in Middle Tennessee or in that northern direction on 65? Not that we know of. That's something we'll be looking into for sure to see if, if we can find. Uh, uh, I, I don't think so because, you know, we've been sort of looking at that from day one as far as family connections. So you're thinking yes, they're on foot? Well, they were when they lost the, their vehicle now. You know, there again, did they steal another car? They hitch a ride with somebody or something, you know, we don't know. Yes, I'm just asking the question. I was going to say, I got indication how they left that remote area yeah. to move on from there. No, sir, we don't, we don't know right now. Okay, thank you. Rick, how far off of 65 was the car left? It looked like, I, I don't know, I haven't been to the scene. Uh, looking at the map, it looked like maybe two or three miles east of 65, uh, due east of Spring Hill, Tennessee. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to tell for sure. But obviously, they were taking the back roads. On our last report, we heard that they had uh, potentially had AR-15, a shotgun, and some other weapons. Do you think that they might have taken those weapons with them or still armed? I think anything they had in the car with them, they obviously took with them because there was nothing in the car. Uh, those are weapons that Vicki White owned personally. Uh, we're assuming that they have those weapons with them. Uh, we don't know that for a fact, but uh, we're on the side of safety. We, we're assuming they do have those weapons. I, I guess we all assume that you guys are canvassing, or someone's canvassing that area right now. Any homes nearby to where the car was dropped off? Any, any structures it, that we should it, It's a sparsely populated area, but, but uh, deputy marshals and other agents have been there all morning canvassing, uh, trying to see if there were any witnesses that, that saw anything uh, that might... Uh, might, might give us some lead. Sure. At this point, is there any information to believe that anyone else, law enforcement or other in the community, were involved with either the, the escape or assisting them once the escape was successful? There's no indication I'm aware of that anyone else was involved other than Vicki White and Casey White. Sheriff, have there been any other credible sightings? I know you were asked about that area in Tennessee. Has, has there been any other credible sightings of these two? None, none credible. Um, you know, the last uh, text we received on our on our uh, face or our uh, message board was that they were seen on I five headed north in Oregon in that orange car. So, Sheriff, that, and that was this afternoon or this morning. Sorry, you've been in law enforcement for many years. What is your gut telling you about this whole situation? Uh, my gut gut is telling me that uh, they're on the they're obviously on the run and. Um, you know, that they're probably right now, you know, I, I think the fact that, that they abandoned this car so quick and where they abandoned it, I think it threw them a curve. I don't think they planned for that. And I think they, uh, you know, are, uh, were grasping at straws. Now, that's been 
you know, a week ago today that this happened, uh, almost to the hour. Matter of fact, two o'clock. Uh, that car was towed at 2:37. It was reported at 10 minutes till two, which is 2:08 right now. So, uh, you know, uh, basically seven uh, days ago to the minute, uh, they had this problem, and so. Uh, I think it threw my curb, but they've obviously had plenty of time to recover from that, so uh, they probably settled back down and, and into some sort of routine. To, to follow up on a question earlier about whether or not someone could have potentially helped them, how else would they have gotten out of this rural, sparse area? If the car breaks down, they leave it aside. What are the possible avenues of transportation? Well, uh, obviously, you know, they could have walked or someone could have picked them up. I mean, that's really about the only two op options. Uh, we're, we're hoping maybe they walked somewhere and then stole a vehicle. So, you know, they're, as we speak, they're working on researching to see if any vehicles were reported stolen in that area. Uh, they might have gotten a ride somewhere because, remember, at this time, there'd been no information put out. We wasn't even aware they, they were missing. So, you know, if somebody saw them walking down the road, they might have just picked them up. I am. I'll be concerned her, for her safety until we know she's safe. Uh, this guy is, you know, he's volatile. I mean, he anything could set him off, and you know, uh, at any time he could, he could just lose it and decide she's a hindrance to him and you know, her harm her. So, uh, Sheriff, some people we spoke to have called Vicky smart and calculated. I mean, do you think that she's sort of one step ahead of? Of law enforcement right now and has all of this planned yeah. out. I, I think that her knowledge of corrections and her knowledge of, of uh, the procedures that, that we use here in the sheriff's office on transport uh, uh, most definitely played to her advantage. I think this was a very well thought out plan and uh, you know so it, it, and her knowledge is it, you know sort of put us uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for you know we're, we're sort of at a loss as to, you know, but, but she, she definitely, I mean, it's, it's a very calculated plan. Sheriff, during your investigation, have you have done any search warrants at either the home that Vicki White used to own or her mother's home? Is, and is that why you have these missing firearms? Is that how you kind of know that information? I, I don't know. Uh, I, I would not be surprised if they hadn't done search warrants. I'm not aware that they, for a fact, that they did. but. Uh, I know they followed every lead, so I haven't asked them about that, and they hadn't informed me yet. Uh, Sheriff, what about the fact that Vicki White might be using different aliases to escape? Uh, we know she used aliases, and, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're following up on that as well. Uh, she used the alias to purchase the car. Uh, so, you know, we know she has used those aliases. Uh, that was another piece of information that was inadvertently let out earlier this week. So I'm assuming she's probably ditched those aliases and uh, probably got some new identities now. Yes, sir. So you've met, obviously, Vicky White in the past. What, what direct message would you say to her? The cameras are here now. He's making a direct appeal to her. What would you say, speak directly to Vicky now? She's probably listening to this or she's going to listen to this. What would you say to her? What would I say to Vicky right what now? Uh, what the same thing I've been saying, you know. I'm sorry. You can speak straight to the yeah. There, yeah. Uh, I would, you know, at this point in time, I would say to Vicky that, you know, the same thing I've been saying. You know, we're going to find you. Uh, hopefully, we find you safe. Uh, if you're safe right now, still safe, uh, get out while you can and uh, turn yourself in to local authorities, wherever you're at. So, yes, ma'am. All right, video about the car no, themselves. Any, surveillance, any additional surveillance video that we haven't talked about that has maybe spotted them either here or in Tennessee? Are we aware of I know, I know, and someone asked earlier about the hotel she stayed in Thursday night. I, we, we did. I followed up to see if we had video of that. The investigators actually went out and viewed the video. We do not have copies of that video, but we do know that she was spotted on video at the Quality Inn directly behind Logan's. Uh, and I know that's been the case in a couple other cases where they viewed the video. We, we don't actually have copies. Thank you. Right, yeah. uh, just want a quick follow-up question regarding the aliases. Do you know if, if she used those aliases for her communication with Casey White while he was in prison? I don't know that. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. A couple sure. more questions. Sheriff, sure, the U.S. Marshals put out um, a mock-up of Vicky's 
wearing a brown wig. Is there any reason as to why you suspect that she may be disguising herself like well, that? Well, I mean, I think it's probably logical and reasonable to assume she's probably tried to alter her appearance uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, do we know for a fact she's done that? No. You know, we don't know for a fact. One more question. Sheriff, how would you sort of summarize where the investigation stands right now? You've talked about some sort of, you know, new information, some setbacks along the way. Where would you just, how would you categorize where this investigation is right now? Uh, it's, it's behind where we'd like for it to be. We, we wish we had a lot more progress. Uh, you know, it's been a week. You know, I, I wish we'd had them back in custody within hours. But, uh, you know, we just have to work with what we got. Uh, we're still depending on leads from the public tips, so we encourage people if you see something, uh, regardless of how unimportant you might think it is, call, report it, and let us follow up on it. Last question. Sheriff, sure, follow kind of what she asked. Um, using her aliases to possibly communicate with KC Wyatt or back to possibly visit in the penitentiaries, which was obviously not reported correctly or stated correctly. Does that go back to like video visitation during COVID and things like that? It does, and phone communication. The thing we've confirmed is phone communication. Yeah, I'm sorry. I read that. Um, the last, last question. <laughs> I read that her keys and cuffs and radio have been found. Can you confirm that? The what now? That Vicki White's uh, jail keys and her handcuffs and her radio have been found. That was all in the car when we uh, found it at the lot. Okay, thank y'all so much, thank you, thank you, and sir. thank you again for helping us get the word out. Uh, y'all have been tremendous, so thank you.